Greetings everybody. Welcome to my video. As promised, this is the casket that has the 4 inch long by half inch thick by 1 inch wide neodymium magnum in it. It's lined with copper. Let's see if I take take it over to the light here. You can barely see it down in there. There's actually you can see the copper. It's got a copper lining in it. And uh, it's stuck down in there. It's broken. It was deteriorating. So when we took it out of the rotor, uh, we drove it down into there. And if we lost a few pieces, went flying. And we had wrapped the rotor in shrink wrap, a couple of wraps with that. And uh, I'm glad we did that. Because when we ended up pulling the shrink wrap off and we were done, there was pieces stuck to the other magnets. So we were able to peel the plastic off and it took all the little pieces with it. But uh, the copper lining did an excellent job of negating the magnetic field. It doesn't, this this is iron here. I got this little button magnet here, so you know, that really sticks to that pretty good. But the, this does not stick to that. Now if I put the little magnet on here, it wants to, to stick just a little, wee little bit. But if I put this on here, that takes it right off. So, but this is, that's kind of weird how <laughs> it's doing that, isn't it? Oh, that's interesting. Well, that's interesting too. It's standing on its, its edge there. Hmm. Interesting. Those busted pieces down in there are doing something to the flux lines, that's for sure. Oh, interesting. Anyway, that's the casket that has the broken neodymium in it. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Keep it for posterity, maybe. I don't know. So, but anyway, I got. I wasn't able to get the bipolar circuit working. That's that right there. I can get one side to work. And then I can hook the other side up and get that side to work but I can't get them both to work together and I think it's because of the orientation of the magnets on my rotor are too close together and it just can't switch fast enough so I don't know I have maybe try some changing some resistances and stuff but so I, I didn't want to get stuck on that so I went ahead and made another another monopole circuit and hooked uh, my coil up to it and as you can tell that coil is sitting pretty high off of there um, that piece of wood there is like three-eighths of an inch thick and then it's sitting at least three-sixteenths of an inch off of the rotor and it is spinning that rotor at 933.5 RPMs and holding it steady but since I hooked the monopole circuit up, I have an extra wire there, so I ran that into this bridge rectifier, and it's giving me about six volts. So I got this little LED here. I'll put that on there. So now we look over here, and we see we're losing a little bit of a little bit of our RPMs there, but the little little lights lit up there. See, it's lit up pretty good there. Now we're still slowing down here a little bit, but that's just on the one wire. Now that's there's uh, the wires are 150 feet long, so essentially there's. 450 feet of wire on that coil. 
divided into three equal parts. So, yeah, but uh, the meter on the left is the run battery, and the meter on the right is the charge battery. And I ran this for a couple of hours today. The charge battery when I started was a like 8.7 or something like that and I ran it for a couple hours and that charged 2 volts into the battery and it did, did, didn't take anything out of the run battery at all it's been bouncing around on 1246, 1247 all day long now I got this light on it here it seems to be bouncing more than it was, that's for sure. And it looks like I'm losing a little bit out of my charge battery too, having that light on there. I think it's just dragging it down. We got our RPMs are at uh, 840 RPM, so it's still going down. I don't know what it's going to level out to. But anyway, on a side note, I went and got some more fishing rod eyes so that I can make another lock here. I got some more wire for this side of the wire rack. So I went and got these, a couple bucks here, some nice tips here. And then the, my, my brother says, oh, I got some fishing rods, and he gave me a whole bunch of old fishing rods, so I guess I really don't need those, but I have them, I guess. They're only a couple dollars. I can't afford to spend a couple dollars frivolously. So that's where I'm at with this so far. Um interesting at least I finally got it spinning on its own coil and I'm not using the mini over there anymore <laughs> so uh, I've got a couple more of those wound and I gotta figure out how I'm gonna make the little box to put the coil in so that I can run them all the way around because I'm gonna have them upside down there so they gotta be inside something so Let's see what our beams are at here. 8.28. Looks like it's slowing down. Getting ready to level off, maybe. Maybe not. Let's see. I'm going to run for a little bit longer here. It's at 12.46. It's still holding its own. I still got the light on though, so what if I take that light off of there and probably change everything? I disconnected the light and now that's charge battery wants to go up to 10.7 and of course our RPMs are going back up. So, that little light did put a little bit of a drag on there. <coughs> Run back up. Now I got the potentiometers turned all the way down and I have a, a 330 ohm resistor in there. I don't know if you can see that we'll focus in on that or not so that's what I got in the circuit so effectively it's running on 
Looks like our charge battery wants to charge back up. I mean, our run battery. So now it's going back up to 1247 there. Hmm. Interesting. So, I guess that's our video for this evening. I hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful day. Peace.